In order to use the model of the scanned artifact for further modeling, it needs to be properly cleaned and it needs to be without holes. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate you how to do that. So what do I mean with uh, clean and without holes? Well, uh, often 3D scanned objects are not completely clean in the sense that parts of the mesh, mesh of the model are floating around in space. So when we consider this model of this scanned uh, Lekitos, um, when I select it in Blender, I can see right away here there is this little part of this mesh that didn't come out of the scanning software properly. And also here, inside, uh, on the opening on the top, there are some parts floating around. We want to get rid of those. And the second thing is, uh, there are big gaps here that didn't come, that were not scanned properly because probably they were too dark or there properly holes and the scanner can not go inside the object. Um, it's essential for further modeling, especially when we want to create attachments that this gap, this hole is filled. Uh, and we're going to use different software for that because Blender isn't uh, properly suited to fill this kind of holes. Um, but for basic cleaning, Blender is uh, very usable. Um, the way to get rid of this floating geometry, floating parts of the mesh, uh, one way to do it, or the main way to do it, is to select the mesh like this. Go into edit mode by hitting top. And then select the entire body that you want to preserve. And the way to select this is just to hover over a part of the mesh and then hit L. On the keyboard. L means you select everything that is linked to the little part that you're hovering over. So everything that is connected to that main part is now selected. That means that everything else that is not connected, that is floating around as separate parts, um, is something that we want to remove from the model. So how do we select? those parts, well, we simply invert the selection. You go here to select and then invert. You can also hit Control I on the keyboard. Now all those other parts are selected, as you can see here, and I just have to delete them, hitting X, delete vertices. Okay, going out of editing mode, you can now see that it's much cleaner those separate parts aren't there anymore, but th there's still some issues here with um, ugly parts of the edge of the mesh. Um, and you can also get rid of those. Uh, many of those parts are classified as so-called non-manifold. So you can see a couple of examples of non-manifold geometry on the screen now. So basically it is geometry that cannot really exist in uh, reality. Uh, there's a quick way to select all non-manifold geometry uh, in a mesh. So you go here to select and then um, select by trade non-manifold. Uh, you get a pop-up screen on the left. If it doesn't show up, then you have to click here. And then there's these six types of non-manifold that you can uh, choose to select. So boundaries is an important one which is basically the boundaries of a mesh that has holes. So it will automatically select all the, the edges of holes. So if I click here, then it will only select the non-manifold vertices without uh, being boundary. So this kind of vertices are the classified non-manifold. Here is one apparently, yeah. So these are on this kind of cross sections of um, of edges uh, and there's no other faces uh, connected to it to that uh, to that uh, point um, so sometimes it helps to kind of just select everything like this and then delete that row of uh, vertices but it often also creates other problems like here suddenly now so you can keep on deleting those so in many cases uh, such as this 
I will do control Z, control Z. To get it back, it's sometimes simply better to uh, delete uh, individual vertices like this. And it may be a little bit hard to select now with all the background. So in fact, what you can do here is uh, select non-manifold and then deselect boundaries and then X and then so it deleted all those uh, weird cross sections but then also created some islands again so we can use the trick that we used before we link select the entire body of the object and then control I to invert select X vertices so it may not be entirely essential to clean up like this considering uh, the next step but uh, these are just some uh, tips that you can uh, use and that you may uh, may be useful for you on uh, projects that you may work on so if you just want to use the model for visualization in blender now uh, it's fine but if you do want to do further editing or use it as a base for further uh, virtual reconstruction you will also need to fill the holes um, so I'm talking about these two main holes in the model um, often in scanning software there is already the option to fill the holes so one way to resolve this is simply in the step before you take it to blender um, uh, use the fill holes algorithm in whatever scanning software uh, you're using but if the model comes out of the scanning software um, without the holes filled and I generally export it without the holes filled to get as little as automatic filling uh, of the of the scanned original scanned object as possible so what the model will be as close as possible to what is actually recorded and not uh, interpreted by the whatever algorithm. Anyway, if we want to use it for further modeling, um, it is quite essential that we have no holes in our model. So in Blender, there are a couple of tools that you can use, but these are generally very slow and often uh, make the program crash. So what I do when I have holes, I export the model to another software, fill the holes there and then import it back into uh, Blender. The other software that I'm using for this is called MeshLab. It's a very useful tool for all kinds of mesh process, uh, processing tasks. Uh, you can uh, find it on meshlab.net. It's free and open source software so you don't have to pay for anything. Uh, it's a great piece of software. So um, from the cleaned artifact, I'm going to uh, uh, select it. I will go to export, um, export to OBJ. And um, yeah, put it in a separate uh, folder and make sure that only the selected is exported it's important that not your entire scene is exported but otherwise you can leave everything as is um, I think oh yeah that's Im probably important um, path mode refers to the location of where the texture is uh, saved so if you want to use that texture uh, also visualize the texture uh, in um, MeshLab. Make sure that you have um, copy selected, so it is copied to the same folder. Um, so I hit export. So now the texture, the MTL file that contains the reference to the texture and the materials and um, the 3D object file, the OBJ file are now together in the same folder. So you can open up uh, MeshLab and you simply do, it's a simple matter of drag and drop. It will load the model and it gives 
this warning textures have not been loaded. Uh, so the reason that we get this warning and I have it added purposefully uh, left in a place that it will give me this warning as a part of the lesson um, is because uh, MeshLab doesn't read texture files that contain a space in their, uh, in their name. So we have to resolve this first. So how do you do this? Well, first you change the name of the texture file itself. So in this case, AP underscore Lakitos, and then there's this space here. And we delete the space and make an underscore of it. So this is very important. Um, there's This is an issue that you come across occasionally working with different kinds of software that is not able to uh, parse uh, spaces uh, in names. Uh, and it can give you this kind of errors. However, it will still not load it, this texture because in the MTL, the material file, it still contains the reference to a file name uh, with the space. So we open this in um, a text editor and then we have to change this also. So it corresponds to the actual file name. Okay. Uh, and now it should load in uh, MeshLab properly. And yeah, so I delete the mesh I previously loaded and as you can see it loaded the texture. Um, it's not that essential that we have the texture displayed here uh, currently because in the next step we're gonna get rid of the texture anyway and we're gonna regain it uh, only back in blender so uh, this was just an extra uh, piece of information about uh, texture file names and how to uh, move files between MeshLab and blender properly so uh, in order to fill these holes uh, we can use a filter uh, that is using a remeshing algorithm so um, it's basically gonna recompute the entire mesh uh, but make sure that there are no holes in it so the algorithm that we are using for this or filter as it is called in MeshLab um, is called screened poisson surface reconstruction so you get um, you get this panel, um, and there's all these parameters. Uh, and MeshLab is known for all these complex parameters. And when you click uh, Help, it will give you information that only someone with a uh, computer graphics uh, technical background will probably understand. Um, but uh, after a lot of uh, trial and error, you will find out the best settings. Uh, generally, for the Poisson uh, screen Poisson reconstruction, you only have to modify really the reconstruction depth. And the reconstruction depth um, basically uh, defines the detail of the reconstruction of the mesh. So when I put a reconstruction depth of, just as a demonstration, a 6, um, and it's important to have pre-clean uh, as well because it will make sure that it can run the algorithm. If you don't set pre-clean often, you get an error message. Uh, and then apply. And you will see that it created this very uh, basic representation of the original shape. Um, so a so-called low poly uh, version, very light, very small file size, uh, can be very useful in uh, to create assets for virtual reality, for instance. Uh, but in this case, we need a little bit more uh, detail because we want to stay close to the original scan. Um, so we go back to filters, make sure that you have the, pro uh, the correct one selected, filters, and then go to uh, remeshing again, uh, screen Poisson, and we choose eight for now. Uh, again, pre-clean, apply, and as you can see, it now created a completely watertight 
version of the mesh so it automatically filled up filled up these uh, holes as you can see it removed also the texture so um, yeah it created a completely new mesh uh, so the reference to this uh, texture uh, the UV map that maps the 3d surface to the 2d uh, texture area is uh, is gone um, there are ways to uh, get that back as well in uh, mesh lab only with this particular object I get a lot of errors uh, so the easy way out is just export it now op uh, import it back in blender and uh, start working with it um, yeah for so for one thing so we chose reconstruction depth 8 and I will now show you what the difference is between the original model so this is the density of the mesh uh, with uh, the new reconstructed uh, version of it and this is the density of the mesh of the original so the level of detail or mesh density has been reduced in the process when you don't want that when you want to uh, retain the same level of detail you will have to go up higher in um, uh, in the reconstruction depth so uh, in this case a reconstruction depth of 10 will give me more or less the same uh, resolution in the mesh as the input so I also get a much heavier model of course it will be harder to deal with in uh, uh, further modeling and editing in Blender. So when we display the wireframe now, so I'm using this uh, button here to show the wireframe and then compare to the original, it's very similar in terms of density. So we could use that one uh, or one of the other ones and as you can see in the areas where it filled these holes it created less dense uh, grid of polygons uh, but it did a good job of uh, filling this area uh, without creating very harsh um, edges or transitions so the next step is uh, importing it back into uh, Blender. So we go here, File, Export uh, Mesh As, and then it doesn't really matter uh, which one we choose. So we call this um, Mesh Lab Export Save. Okay. okay so that one is uh, exported so I can go now back to blender and I can go here to import and then obj um, mesh lab convert uh, mesh lab export so this I need this file import and now it should end up exactly on the same place as in uh, as the original object that we have already imported in Blender, so that's good. It did. Um, if it did, if it didn't for some reason for you, then you will probably have to uh, rotate it 90 degrees on any of these axes. But uh, this one uh, did import properly. So to get this texture back uh, on the model we have to use the original this one to uh, project this color information from this model to this model and that is uh, a procedure called texture baking and I'm dealing with that in a different video